What should be our response to those who propagate false teaching? We are to obviously keep an eye out for false teachings and false teachers, but when it comes to a proper response, do we merely refute the teaching only and point people back to biblical doctrine? Or are we to actually go after and call out the teacher as well? First of all, yes, there is indeed precedent in scripture for naming names. This command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you fight the good fight, keeping faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. Among these are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan that they will be taught not to blaspheme. First Timothy chapter 1. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will not welcome us. So when I come, I will call attention to what he is doing, spreading malicious nonsense about us. Not satisfied with that, he even refuses to welcome other believers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. 3 John chapter 1. In 2 Timothy, the Apostle Paul goes as far as to give two call-outs per chapter. So yes, calling out the teacher rather than just the teaching itself is indeed biblical. Still, those who are more passive will object. Should Christians really be attacking other Christians? especially when they should be out there doing the work of seeking and saving the lost. What will non-Christians think when they see the body of Christ divided? First of all, as we examine the above descriptions of false teachers, when it comes to the most heinous examples, the question has to be asked whether some false teachers are even Christians at all to begin with, in which case they are strangers to the truth of Christ and know only the falsehoods that they seek to promote. The Apostle Paul said, I wrote you in my letter not to associate with immoral people. I did not at all mean with the immoral people of the world, or with the covetous and swindlers, or with idolaters, for then you would have to go out of the world. But actually, I wrote you not to associate with any so-called brother if he is an immoral person, or covetous, or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or a swindler. Do not even eat with such a one. For what have I do have to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are already within the church? But those who are outside, God judges. So remove the wicked man from among yourselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. As much as there is gross sin in the outside world, Paul, Paul is saying, the church is not to serve the role of judge and executioner. Rather, such judgment is to be applied to those within the church who already profess the name of Christ. The specific sins that Paul lists in this passage includes idolatry, or to put it practically, false teaching. The church is to pay closer attention to the concerns within its own walls rather than the affairs of the outside world. Being obedient to the Great Commission is no excuse. Furthermore, if we are truly committed to seeing the lost come into a saving relationship with Christ, we should have a passionate desire to ensure that these people are presented with an accurate and faithful portrayal of who God really is as revealed in scripture, as opposed to a caricature enforced and promoted by false teachers. I'm Benjamin Valentine. Thanks for watching.